Hey, hey, friends, this is Chris Bradley with Produce Like a Boss, where we simplify and demystify music production for singers and songwriters. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna jump into one of my favorite samplers, Battery, and I'm gonna show you how I use this plugin to manipulate my samples, to perform my samples, and I'm even gonna show you how I save my kits. I'm also gonna be jumping into the Logic Sampler to show you what I use that for, because I do actually use them both. So before we jump in, I just wanna say, if you are liking what you hear on this channel, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and make sure to hit that bell to be notified notified when I drop a new video and without further ado let's jump in do it like a like a like a boss like a like a boss do it like a like a like a boss like a boss Hello and welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about samplers. As I said before, my sampler of choice is battery. There is no right or wrong way, but I can only teach you in one. So we're gonna start there and then actually, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the logic sampler as well. But let's start with battery. So first I'm gonna create a new instrument track, option command N, and then it's already selected here, but just so you see how I would have got there, I would have gone to instruments, native instruments, battery, and then I'm gonna create a stereo track. So I wanna show you why I absolutely love this sampler. So let's get her open. So the first thing's first, you can actually go into their library and look at how many kits they have to choose from. There's just amazing sounds. We can just audition a few. I mean, there's just sounds and sounds for days. Very cool. Let's see, disco. <laughs> we got a DMX kit in here. What's this? Yeah, I see that. So anyways, there are so many kits in here, literally just pre-made for you. And they're already loaded up with all the right sounds that would go into that kit. So they're going to have everything from like a snare and a kick to, um, to a hi-hat, to a shaker, to just a whole bunch of stuff like in each of these kits. So you can start there, but you can also load your own kits, which is what I end up doing most of the time with battery. I'm using it as a sampler. So let's go over into the files and you can see here that it's going to take you through your files. So my samples are on my desktop right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and then go to my go to samples and now I can see this is exactly what my samples external drive looks like this is how it's numbered this is how it's organized and now I can start to build my own kit so I want to show you there's two different ways that I build kits um, one way would be to go the way that battery is showing you right here where it's actually got like a kick and you know a tambo and a snare it's actually giving you a mixed bag to reach into which is more like a kit but I want to show you another way that I like to do it so let's say I'm looking to build a beat and I'm looking for a kick the easiest way to audition a lot of kicks at once is to actually just load them up next to each other. So let's go into like that sound, for example, and let's go into the future kick and we'll just go into all their tight kicks. And now I'm going to go click here. I'm going to go shift and click here and I'm actually going to load all of those in. And I'm also going to save this for later in case I ever want to come back and filter through these kicks again. Um, and let's say, let's go file, save kit as, and I can say that sound future underscore kicks. And now moving forward, if I ever want to access that, it's already there. So you can build kits and then you can save them. I love that about this sampler. So the reason that I would choose a bunch of kicks in a kit as opposed to a mixed bag is so that I can audition sounds quickly, right? So let's say that we got, let's just get a click going here and we've got a bunch of stuff from before. Let's just mute all that. And we'll just leave this little, we can just leave this little conga. Right? Or Right. So this way I'm getting to just audition what that I'm honing in on that one singular sound and going right now. I just want to focus on the kick in order to do that. I need to get in kick land. But if I make a mixed bag where I'm playing with an entire kit, I might be going, I might be playing with things like patterns and seeing how the kick and the snare bounce off of each other, which is totally fine, by the way. It's just knowing the difference of when you're ready to hone in on a sound. And when you want to hone in, you got to get in that audition process, man. <laughs> so that's what I love about this. Now, if you did want to do like a mixed kit, for example, and we can do that too. Let's, in fact, um, let's see, maybe I got a, a kit in here that's already been made. I have a hip hop kit. There we go. What's in it? Right?
right? So as you can see, that is more performance based. It's going to allow you to get into the vibe and start playing with everything as though you're actually playing live. So just to recap, the difference between the two is one is gonna put you in audition mode and allow you to just focus on the sound design of that one element. And the other is going to allow you to kind of play and get a little more um, into the performance aspect of it. So while we're here, I know I showed you how I quickly pull in like a lot of kicks or a lot of snares because that's just kind of like a highlight and drag. But let's just build a kit uh, from scratch really quick to see what that might look like. And to keep it simple, um, like I said, we can either access our own samples from here or we can reach into something like Splice, which I'll just do really quick here. So the first thing I would do, let's say I would look for a kick and oh, let's let's clear all that. There we go. OK, I like that kick. I'll just put that right here. Next, I want to find a snare and whatever else you want to load into your, um, oh, that's a nice little rim shot. Uh, whatever else you want to load into your sampler for a performance base um, kit. And that's not to say that you have to play everything at once, by the way, it's just having it there at your fingertips. So let's look for a hat, like a hi hat. I know you guys probably can't hear the audio on my splice, but don't worry, you're about to hear it, so. There we go, cool. Just using one hand over here, but you get the idea. So now if I have just those three things loaded, I can loop this now. And let's say I wanna play the kick and the snare. It's already loaded into my sampler, no problem. And now I'm just being able to access those things from my sampler. And I was even able to put this on loop so that I could record those. And then I can just highlight, click Q, and that will quantize it, right? Depending on what the loop is, I probably wouldn't have them all on the same track like that. Oftentimes I'm gonna be separating out my kick and my snare, my hi-hat, but that's just to give you an example of what it's like to build a kit. So let's go back to this battery kit here. Let's save this. Let's say that we like this and we want to be able to come back to this at any time. I'm just going to call this, you know, hip hop number one. And now I'm just going to save it there. And now anytime I go to open battery, this kit, which by the way, you can fill all the way up. I was just showing you a few things here. Um, you'll be able to open it under open, uh, open kits or even open recent if you've used it recently. So let's take a deeper dive into battery and see how you can manipulate your sample once you pull it into the sampler. So I'm gonna open up Splice here and I'm gonna pull in a couple samples. First, I'm going to, let's just, let's go for like a vocal sample or something. Instruments, um, vocals, we'll go for one shots. All right, we're gonna grab this one and pull it in. And you can see like how much tail is on that sample, right? So you can start here with the volume uh, envelope and uh, we can immediately take that down and adjust the hold and decay and the attack. So let's see what that did just by taking off the hold. There's nothing there, right? So we're gonna go ahead and crank that back up. But now we need that decay, right, for that tail. So we're gonna crank that back up. Now we could slow this attack as well so it wouldn't come in as hard. Let's try it even more extreme, just to give you an example. See how it kind of slid into it? So you're able to mess with the, the volume envelope, which is really cool. Um, I also like this velocity knob here because the more you tweak this, the, the less hard you have to actually hit the keys. So depending on what you're working with, sometimes it's good to have that human element of like, hey, how hard I hit this is how much you know gusto I want it to have. But sometimes when you're doing things like um, that you don't want that kind of velocity in, you know, maybe it's in a kick or a snare pattern and you just want it real consistent, um, you might go ahead and drag this down. And, uh, and you can mess with that. Another thing that I use on this main tab here is the filter. I will use that sometimes. Sometimes I like to do that outside of my sampler um, once I get into using my plugins and stacking my EQs, but just so you can hear, I could do that. We can roll off the highs there. Roll off some of the lows. We have a compressor here. We also have a sends for delay and reverb. Um, once again, I tend to do that outside of the sampler, but it's nice to have it there. You can also mess with the tune of the, the sample right there, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, you can pan it left and right. 
And then that's pretty much all I kind of mess with on the main page here. Um, let's get into the effects page. You can add saturation, which is awesome. You can add this like lo-fi effect. <laughs> Um, and then you can mess with it, tweak until it feels good for you. Um, another filter and EQ here that you can use, um, as well as compression. And um, I believe this is a transient master. It's actually pretty cool. Let's grab like a kick or something. And let's see what this does. I don't mess with this that much, but I mean, you can adjust the attack. You can adjust the sustain. Okay, okay. You feel how it gets tighter and a little punchier as you crank up here? It really cuts through and then as you bring it down here it gets a little bit softer so next let's talk about the setup tab so if i want to take this vocal sample and i want to play it like a keyboard meaning i want to map across that vocal sample and play it like musical keys i'm just going to turn on this key track here and then i'm going to make sure that i adjust my key range from c1 to as high as i want it to be which actually it's fine on c3 so let's have a listen See how it's going up as I push down on my keys, which you can't see, but you know that I'm going C, D, E, F, G. Um, and that's how it's mapped out. Now, if you don't want your samples to go in, run into each other, like if you're working with longer samples, for example, in fact, let's just lengthen this so you can see. Let's lengthen that decay. You're gonna wanna go into setup and change this voices to one and check out the difference. See how it's cutting off the sample before it so it didn't run into each other? Okay, so that's where you're gonna wanna do that. Um, <clears throat> let's go down to this kick here to hear what this does. Articulation, that's pretty cool. It's like a right, left, right, uh, three stroke rough. You can go through these and play with different ones. There's rolls, that's pretty fun. A little buzz, muted, speed roll. That would be fun for hi-hats. I don't know what that is, G giger counter. <laughs> and then uh, alternate stroke. So you can play with this and with this articulation. You know, some, occasionally I've used it for the, um, oh, there's a nice flam in there as well. Uh, I use it for snares. I'll use it for this little three stroke rough here. So that's pretty much all I use this articulation for if I use it at all. And I don't really mess with the MIDI echo um, or the humanize, and not to say that you couldn't, but it's not where I spend a lot of time, uh, nor do I spend a lot of time in the editor at the moment. Um, you can always go over to your master if there's something you wanna throw in the master and it's the same thing as we saw before. There's filter EQ, a compressor, a transient master, saturation, and a limiter, and then your, your buses are over here as well but I like to keep that inside of my DAW so um, so yeah that is basically everything that I use the battery sampler for now while I prefer battery for most things if I'm just going from mapping out a sample across my keys quickly or looking to do some quick sample chops like on vocals um, I love the logic sampler so let's dive into that really quick so I'm gonna grab a vocal loop here from these, uh, the loop section in Logic, and I'm just gonna pull it in and you drag it here. And then I'm gonna go to Quick Sampler and it's going to actually create a sampler for me. And you can see that there's three options here, Classic, One Shot, and Slice. So here's the difference. With Classic, I'm gonna hit a key. And when I lift my finger off the key, it stops playing right now. This is, as you can see, is a full loop. But if I put it in one shot mode, the second I hit a key, it's gonna play the whole thing, right? And that's kind of like what we were talking about earlier. It's like, if I was really gonna play that long of a loop, I probably wouldn't pull it into a sampler. But this is where it gets really fun, where we play with the slice feature, right? So now we're asking it to slice, and so every key we hit is going to play a different portion of that sample or that loop. Um, and then you can actually go into the modes here and decide how you want it to be chopped. So right now it's chopping on transients, which is a really great place to start. And you know, I could hear a beat just doing that, but let's go in and, and play with the different things. So you can have it chop automatically on beat divisions. That gets a little too choppy for me but that's an option as well because it's going on every beat at that point. But you can also just go here for equal divisions. That's that.
Now what I like to do is I like to get in here and actually manually move them around. So that's also an option. And once you click there, it's like, okay, I'm in manual mode now. So you might say, okay, I want this one to be this length. I want this one to be this length. I want this one to just be here. And you can tell by playing the sample uh, which portion it's gonna play. So let's start at the top. Now it's giving me that little at the end and I don't want that, so let's cut that off. Right? Now let's say the second key that we hit. We can go in there and we can adjust this point for when we want that to end. Maybe we want it to end just right there. And maybe we just want to take that part of it. So being able to get in there and do this manually is super helpful because then you can figure out which parts you actually want to keep. So I wanted to do this with a loop first to show you and also make sure you to go over here to your amp and change this to one so that your samples don't run into each other. So whenever you change this poly over here to one, it's going to help so that your samples don't continuously run into each other. And we can check that out on the one shot as well. See, it's not running into the sample. Okay, next I wanted to show you like a single vocal. Like if you wanted to just take one vocal and pull it in and map it across your uh, your keys. So let's see, what do we got? <laughs> what is happening with these sounds? Oh, I have an idea. Here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this here and create an audio track. And then I'm just going to go in here and chop off the part that I want. So let's say it is, oh, let's get this marquee here. Let's say it's that. Get rid of the rest. Let's pull that into here. See how I just dragged it to create the quick sampler? And now I have a sampler. So I took that, ah, uh, ah, uh, right? And now I can play it across my board by simply just dragging it. And I'm going to show you how I do that one more time. Grab and drag it and then go to quick sampler and then it's going to create the sampler and it's automatically going to set you up with cl classic now you could do this with your own vocal ooh let's try that ah uh, ah uh, oh and then let's say we wanted to just take ah uh, ah uh, oh let's take that oh right oh and let's go ahead and add a crossfade t a t a Let's listen to that and make sure that it's clean. Oh, I could probably even cut it just a little shorter with that fade. Oh, awesome. Now we're going to drag that in here and create a sampler. Now with my own voice, I'm creating a sampler. Haven't done anything. I haven't even touched the plugin. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. So a couple other things I wanted to show you with that is you can adjust the ADSR right over here. So it takes that attack and it smooths it out, or you can keep it hard. I kind of want to keep it hard, like, oh, 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 oh. Um, once again, I'm going to change that poly to one so that they don't cut each other off. And then let's mess with this glide here and see what happens. Let's crank it up a little bit more. It's kind of short, so let's see. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. So you hear how it's gliding from note to note. It doesn't really sound as good on the vocal as it would with maybe like an 808 or something, but I did want to play with that just to show you. So that's pretty much all I'm really using the Logic Sampler for because I pretty much do everything that I want to in battery unless I want to just pull in something and map it across all the keys like we just did here. So now you know what a sampler is and how to use it.